Hi, December 7th reading is Jeremiah 33, 14 through 16. And it says in the contemporary English version, the Lord said, I made a wonderful promise to Israel and Judah, and the days are coming when I will keep it. I promise that the time will come when I will appoint a king from the family of David, a king who will be honest and rule with justice. In those days, Judah will be safe, Jerusalem will have peace, and will be named the Lord gives justice. All right, Lord Jesus, we come before you, Lord, and we realize that the whole story of the Bible is a, is a intricate weaving of your redemption and salvation of us and your amazing love for us. Let us be able to receive the fact that we are loved by you, that we're not outcasts, we're not forsaken, and that no matter what goes on in this world, we have promise and future in you. And as your word says that we should not fear what mortal men can do to our bodies, but that we should have a reverent fear of you who holds our souls and holds our eternity in your hands. I ask that you make your word come alive to us, Lord Jesus, and touch our hearts in your precious name. Amen. So, um, something I cling to a lot is the fact that our promises that we are given our promises. We are given the promises of the, the Jewish people. So had Christ not come and grafted the Gentiles into the tree, the lineage of the Hebrews, we wouldn't have everything before this. But then you think when Jesus says in there that, uh, I think it, Paul might actually say it, um, that we are grafted into the vine. We are grafted into the promises of the Hebrew people. We are considered God's chosen people once we've accepted Christ. Now that's the key. Um, you have to accept Christ. The Jewish people, Israel, deserve to be a nation. They deserve to exist. They are God's chosen people and that will never change. We must stand with Israel. There's no debate there. They as a, Christ, as a Christian, Israel has become our nation. They have become our people. The Jewish people are our people. Now, on another side note, if you have not accepted Christ, it's all moot. There is one way to be made right with God, and there is one way to salvation, and there is one way to eternal life. And not being eternally separated from God, can you imagine? And you really can't, but I'll get into that in a minute. And that way is Jesus Christ. Now, when I said you can't imagine what eternal separation from God feels like, it's because right now, he's everywhere. Everywhere. Romans 1 tells us that God has made his existence so plain and clear in creation that man is without excuse. I really recommend you read Romans 1. And that, because it, it tells us, that we are without excuse when it comes to acknowledging Christ. Um, so when you read Romans 1, you'll see that. He's everywhere. Our entire being vibrates to the tenure of his voice. We have no concept. I, I, I can't, I don't have enough time and I, I can't make it clear enough that we have no concept of what it would feel like to be eternally separated from him. We have no concept of what it would feel like to be separated from him. Okay. Jesus felt that. And I don't even know if it was like the eternal separation feeling, but he felt the separation be when he was on the cross. He felt it. That's why he asked God why he'd forsaken him. That's why he called that out in his agony. And I'm not even going to pretend to act like I know what Jesus went through or the level of separation he felt there. I'm not going to pretend to know that. Um, but when you consider that God is literally everywhere and even those that don't acknowledge him, he's there. He's inside. He's outside. He's everywhere. We have no concept of what that would feel like for that to be gone because we've never experienced it. And we won't experience it until the day of judgment 
when those who rejected Christ are cast away from him. So we'll have no concept. We'll never have a concept. Those in the Lamb's Book of Life will never know that. And it's our desire that no one should. And that's God's desire. That's what John 3, 16, 17 says. That none should perish. So, um, tomorrow is... I didn't look up the verse. I know that's horrible. Uh, tomorrow is the 8th. And we're looking at Psalm 72, 1-7. And um, I'll see you then.